Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. I guess I'm a little out of focus here. As y'all can see, I got my Mufasa here with me. Um, and he's such a pretty boy. Of course, he's uh, the number one pick of the litter. He's mine. Um, number one male pick of the litter. Look how shiny and pretty he is. Anyway... Um, I'm doing this um, impromptu vlog, um, and I want to make sure that y'all understand what's to come. I am going to do a video about this Anthony Farrell here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who did the shooting at the Miller Brewery. And the reason why I'm taking my time to do this because I have a few uh, people that I know that work at Miller. I have a few people that I know that quit Miller. And although I may not get them to uh, do a show with me, I definitely, definitely am going to get them to um, make their comments about their experiences working at Miller Brewery. Um, and just some of the racism and some of the uh, things that go on and what kind of environment that it is. I think it's real important that um, y'all get another side of this um, uh, uh, story. Um, because what's happening as we see it here is, uh, of course, the Milwaukee Press is acting as if just the families, uh, that there's only one victim in this. And that's the... The, the family of the people who got shot. They're not even looking at the uh, family of Anthony Farrell as victims at all um, in terms of their father working, a husband, brother, family, working somewhere for 20 years, putting a suit in against a company um, and then being sued, and they're left to pick up the pieces of this massacre um, you got GoFundMe pages for the family of the members who got shot of course people no one cares about the innocent family and children of this man um, so I have to say something uh, they didn't shoot anybody um, he was a provider he was a breadwinner and in his family for uh, over 20 years would have pretty good income, pretty good family. He was an electrician, and he made pretty good money working at Miller. Miller is one of the few places here in Milwaukee, if you get a job there, I think they start, the breweries were starting off at, um, you know, 20 and $30 an hour. So, um, which is interesting because 30 years ago, some of the brewers paid $17 an hour, and the cost of living was a lot less. When I came out of school, we all went to Slitz, you went to M Miller, you went to Paps. You went to one of these uh, places, and, you know, right out of high school, making 17 18 bucks an hour. I mean, that was good money. We, uh, you know, we had cars. They were self-sustaining envelope, uh, envelopes. Employment, you could send your children to college on them uh, incomes, on those salaries. The cost of living wasn't as high as it is now. But of course, those days are gone. Um, but I really want to bring this story to you guys, and I'm taking my time because, again, I know a few uh, people who work there. I also know an individual that has three sons, a brother named by the name of Tony. One of his sons quit. Two of them continue to work there, and they've got a story about um, just how the environment was for black people. You know, all the interviews you see are mostly Caucasian people. However, there's like 300 plus black people that work at Miller, and unfortunately, none of them was interviewed at all. Ah, look at this big boy. Let them see you, big fella. None of them were interviewed at all um none of them i guess they felt seemed deemed worthy of even asking what happened 
the only opinions to them was validated was the opinion of the white people and the white employees that worked at Miller, which I find a travesty. I'm waiting. I haven't seen any footage from any person of color that's willing to talk about the environment. Uh, and certainly the major, uh, the, the major networks here, the 6, 12, and 4, they're definitely not coming from that perspective. And if they are, they're making it one-sided. Okay? You know how that goes. Black people always portraying the race card and, um, you know, they, they, they didn't see anything racist. They worked a long time at this particular place and they've never seen any racism. And of course, it's all a figment of our imagination. Yeah, so, you know, this, that's, this is a very interesting story. It's something I really, really want to bring forth. So I want y'all to bear with me a little bit and I'm going to gather some more facts. And hopefully YouTube won't strike the video down. And, um, you know, you guys will get a perspective from Boots on the Ground right here in Milwaukee. What a lot of people think about uh, Miller Moore's Coor, or whatever they call it. Well, we call it Miller Brewery. But I see now it's called Moore's, Moore's Coors or something to that effect. Still Miller. Okay, same building, same employees, same stuff. Okay, same crap. Same bull crap. So, um, and then to top it off, they said that the CEO is from South Africa. He was part of the apartheid regime. No wonder that environment was so uh, toxic. And some of the workers that were white felt um, very comfortable with their behavior, which I think is sad. You know, whatever you do, develop in a society on race, on color, you know, it's so stupid. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, you mad at people about things they can't control. You mad about uh, something that is so ridiculous. Um, you believe in God, but you don't believe God made all people. Or God made a certain group of people that you're supposed to mistreat. I mean, it's all so diabolical and it really should speak to your heart in terms of how mentally ill a group of you guys really are to really think that you're better and you've been given a program. So it's really going to be high, hard to fight that propaganda. Um, and you can see it because when people say black people play the race card as if we're making all this stuff up uh, in terms of our treatment, in terms of how they treat us, in terms of um, what goes on, when white people in these environments and the fact that people can think people are making this kind of stuff up and and it's been going on <laughs> since slavery I mean if, if you could if, if people could beat slaves the way they did what would make it so far-fetched and lynch them and hang them and burn them what would make it so hard-fetched for you to believe that oh when black people complain about brutality and things like that that it's a lie I mean, how crazy are you to even think that after you see a history of what is happening to these these particular people? So, for those of y'all who are naysayers, I mean, y'all never going to, you never going to come across anyway because you're not human. But human beings can understand where we're coming from. Uh, God made us into tribes and families that we may get to know one another, not antagonize one another and be ruthless towards one another try to murder one another. That is not why we were made into different tribes and families. And that's according to the Holy Quran. So, with that being said, I'm going to come back again um, with this story because it's very important to me. And, um, with that being said, if you like what you hear, oh, and say bye to my Mufasa. This is a pretty big male we got here. I got a couple of them. Um, this big, he's so pretty. Uh, but I didn't have that many males in the litter, remember? And I still got, uh, I think, about five more puppies for sale. So, um, any of y'all interested in these pups, uh, the last few that are here, please hit me up, give me a call. Area code 414 
502-6374 or area code 414-639-5309. And you can get one of these big old handsome, uh, but pretty, pretty Connie Corsos. Look at here. Say I'm nine weeks. I'm nine weeks. And I'm about a good 22 pounds so far. <laughs> All right. We call him Mufasa. Because Mufasa is so laid back. He's just a sweetheart. He's so sweet. So with that being said, um, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share. Y'all remember I did this same video with his mama about two years ago. Except she was way more active than him. He just sits here. All this fur around his neck. Look at that. He's going to be a big fella. Look at these paws on this man. Look at these paws on this fella. Yeah. This one here? This dude here? Oh, man. He's just a sweetheart. With that being said, if you like what you hear, again, like, subscribe, and share. We'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.